Hi, today we have Cash Partridge from True North up in Townsville. And Townsville is really a tough area for panels and inverters because uh, some of the panels in Australia that failed um, actually up in the Townsville area because it's very humid, etc. So what can you tell me about solar in Townsville, Cash? Well, it's certainly a, um, a harsh environment, so not only the heat but the humidity. So I think it's the combination of both of those. You've really got to be um, smart with your selection of panel. In, in anywhere from sort of Mackay North, Mackay, Townsville, Cairns, you can't just go putting up uh, the cheapest panel you can possibly find, that's for sure. Right. So what are the locals like in, in Townsville? You know, they kind of hardworking or they're kind of all trendy dandy type of people? No, it's just definitely a, um, Townsville's definitely a working, a working town. So um, I remember when I moved to Townsville um, 25 years ago, um, it was for work. So um, you got the government, you got Laverack, uh, the army, um, big government uh, entities there. So yeah, it's definitely a working town and all hard workers. It's a hard environment and probably no harder job than on a roof putting solar panels down. So um, yeah, she's definitely a, um, definitely a working town. Right, so you don't do the latte with the oat milk and two sugars and all of this? No, just flat white. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. No, no, you still got to line up behind the um, the oat, oat milk, um, half strength, decaf, um, soy, yeah. <laughs> Look, um, you've been in solar how long now? Um, well, KDP, True North Solar, it started in two, end of 2004 so this is this is the 20th 20th year so it's it's a long time in business uh, especially a, a a family a family business so it's been a few um changes over the years we rebranded with true north solar um back in about 2011 just before the the 44 cent feed-in tariff took up and that that's when solar really exploded but um we've seen probably 60 odd companies come and go though in in Townsville since that 2010, 2011. Um, and basically since that time, we've, we're probably the longest established solar company in, in North Queensland. And what is your trick to survive uh, when all the other 60 companies locally left? Well, maybe I'm just crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just think we've always had good staff, always been passionate. Um, there's all, obviously been some hiccups along the way. There's obviously not um, they call it the solar coaster for a reason. There's, there's a lot of ups and downs. The you know, government gets involved, there's feed-in tariffs. Next minute there's an explosion of solar and the feed-in tariffs stop. Then you go down to nothing. Um, but we've always sort of had things in the pipeline. And I mean, we've got, we've got a customer base of 5,000 people. So um, you, you utilise that a bit over the years. Um, what about the product? Yeah, the products come and go as well. So I guess... Um, back in the day using various types of panels and inverters and they sort of have different, um, they come and go as well. But uh, I guess you rely on your, your complete um, sales pipeline from your, your manufacturers to your local wholesalers, um, even your whole community when you go to different events um, throughout the country with solar. You're always communicating with everyone else, passing on information and, um, yeah, you've got to pay particular attention to to the type of product and manufacturers you're dealing with, mm -hmm. um, really intensely looking at the, um, the warranties and, and making sure all of these companies actually have a presence in Australia. You can pick up the phone, you can talk to these people. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, it's a lot but, of that. But listen, I mean, th this is a unique story. You're telling me in Townsville, you've been going for 20 years. You've seen 60 companies come and go, give warranties that are worth nothing now. You're still around. You're still valid. Your warranties mm. mean something. How did all that happen? Yeah, I guess, I mean, you're always looking from the outside as well. I mean, from day to day, you, um, you, you're putting yourself in the customer's shoes, I guess, and you don't want that to happen to you. So you're always thinking ahead, okay, how can I um, put in little stop gaps that help our customers that, I mean, I've got solar and people at work have got solar and friends and family, so you don't want any of them to get caught out as well. So I guess you always got to be proactive and 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 look to the future and, and yeah, make sure those warranties do mean something. But also build a system that lasts. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So um, um, a lot of our work now is actually replacing systems. So probably 30% of the, 
the systems that we're installing now, um, between that sort of 2010, 2013 <coughs> period, um, you know, they, back then the panels probably only had a 10 year life, lifespan anyway, but a lot of them are getting ripped out mm. um, and replaced. But most of them, ones that we're, we're doing that to, we, we never installed that original system. So um, you would think that we're just replacing the systems. We installed 10 plus years ago, but but it's not. So um, we asked these customers, you know, why not go back to the installer that, that put it in? 99% of the time, they're no longer here. <laughs> okay, rightio. So that all makes sense then. So, right, right. Yeah. So what services do you provide nowadays? Um, most of our work is you know, putting in solar systems for your average residential um, house, so your mums and dads and um, young families, retirees. Um, we do a lot of hybrid systems, so getting systems, say, battery ready, um, for instance, something that you can put batteries to um, in the next year or two. There's uh, fully loaded battery systems now, so hybrid systems with battery backup, um, which is getting more, more and more popular. Um, there's off-grid systems, so Townsville's got a large sort of rural um, area, a lot of cattle properties and things like that um, near Charters Towers. Um, so a lot of off-grid systems as well. Um, and then there's small commercial. So a lot of small businesses, um, they do a lot of systems up to 30 kilowatts. So small commercial around that 30 to 40 kilowatt um, mark. And then there's your bigger systems, sort of 100 kilowatts plus. Um, so it's sort of a, a, big, a big market, very varied. Um, but as time goes on and there's more and more older systems out there, the biggest growth in our business is actually inspections of, of systems. So um, fault finding, um, repairs, maintenance, swapping out inverters, swapping out panels. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of service work. So someone will ring up, they're, they're either looking at their power bill and they're thinking may, maybe the solar hasn't saved, saved us enough or um, maybe they've walked past their inverter and there's a red light and they're not sure what that is. Um, these might be systems that are around 10 years old as well and they've sort of got a bit of a feeling that um, maybe it is towards the end of their life. Um, and us having all our own electricians, we've got all our own um, solar installers as well. So um, it's not as if we have to try and find someone to, to go out and have a look at these systems. So um, we can send an electrician out, um, go through our, our app, which has a full checklist um, on it, and then um, work out what's wrong with this system, determine whether it's just replace a few panels or, or um, replace an inverter, or there's something wrong with the cabling, or there's an issue with an isolator, maybe water ingress um, into an isolator. And then sometimes the whole system might need to be replaced. Or well, that might be better financially for the customer um, to replace the whole system um, than to, you know, do small repairs and, and things like that. And then that. maybe in a couple of years you have to come back anyway. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And and because if you, you can still get the upfront rebate on a full replacement system right. now. So financially um, it, it, it can work out a lot better because right. right. you so, get the rebate. So for service work in Townsville? Go to True North. Come to True North Solar. Mm. Plenty of guys there. And, we can, and I guess having all that experience um, over a long period of time, because a, a lot of times in that first 10 years, a lot of the faults you're going to, it's the first time you've seen that fault, mm -hmm. even after 10 years. But after 20 years, you, there, there's some commonalities in the faults and you can shorten that time frame when you go to site. You've got a good idea what it's going to be before you even get there. Got it. Mm. Experience is everything. That's right. Now... There is a lot of cheap solar being offered in different parts of the world. Do you get it in Townsville too? And what's more important for the end customer, a really, really sharp price or a good install? Yeah, there's there's definitely, you, you do see the, the cheap solar being advertised. Most of the time it's on it's on TV. And and customers, they're, they're already a bit nervous. So if you're sitting down with the customer, um, you know, if, if they're talking to us, they're, they're not looking for the cheaper solar system. I know that already, but they do bring it up. They want to know, they want clarification of um, why it is so so cheap. Um, at the end of the day, they've got the cheapest solar panel. They've got the cheapest inverter. They've got the cheapest rails. They've got the cheapest labor. They've got the cheapest everything. And they're obviously nodding with each one of them. So you're going to have the cheapest outcome. And you know, I always say to our customers as well, if they're looking at solar, if you're getting an air conditioner installed in your house, are you going to be getting someone from South Australia that's advertised on TV, might be good at cricket, but would you get them to install an aircon in your house in Townsville? No, you wouldn't. So why would you get them to install solar? 
So, yeah, there's there's lots of good solar companies in towns. I always say to people, the number one, if you're not going to use us, that's okay. We don't get every, everyone's business, but as long as you get someone local, you need to get someone local. Is that because after sale is so important? That's right, yeah, because you just never know. There's e Even with the monitoring side of things, sometimes Wi-Fi might play up or you're just not quite sure if the system's working properly and you need that reassurance, boom, you jump on the phone, someone will answer the phone mm. at True North Solar and we can just walk you through it. Or if there's anything more serious, we can pop out onto site. These companies that advertise on TV, once they have your money, you'll never hear from them again and you'll never be able to contact them again. But those cheap solar companies, they give me 25-year warranty. Well, they might as well give you a 100 years warranty. It doesn't matter. They're still not going to come. So a, a lot of the systems that, that we're replacing, maybe five to seven years old, they are these systems that are on, on TV that are advertised for three or four grand. The customers aren't going to go back. Um, you know, there's a bit of embarrassment too that they've, that they've fallen for this $3,000 system so they don't want to go back to these people to try and get it replaced. Um, they tend to come to someone local like us, just rip it out, start again. And usually the company that sold in the first place then actually don't exist. Well, yeah, I mean, they can be there, but they just, they're not going to tolerate anyone ringing up. The, the helpline, when you press number three to go through to the to the help desk, that just goes beep, beep, <laughs> beep. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, you can go through these companies, look at their Google reviews, um, ask, ask some of your friends. Most of our customers come from referrals um, or they come to our website or they see our workshop. Mm. They come in, they say good day, and they talk to our staff at the desk. We come out to site. Um, so, yeah, you, you need to go through that full full process. Um, don't just buy something off, off TV. It's, it's, it's a pretty important thing. It's something that's attached to your home. There's electrical components. Um, if done wrong, um, a lot of things can go wrong. Mm. But, mm. Uh, yeah, there's no reason to do that. There's lots of good companies in, in your local area that will help you out and we'll bend over backwards to help you out. Right, right. Um, just for anybody who's um, in solar, the... Townsville area is actually the, what's called in the industry the canary in the coal mine because Townsville is probably the toughest to panels and inverters with the humidity and the heat. So if anything fails in Australia, usually that product fail, uh, fails around the Townsville area first. Fails first. Uh, yeah. So you kind of you must have seen companies just simply decided to leave when they picked a product that was pretty crap. How do you make sure that the panels and the inverters that you pick stand that Townsville climate? Yeah, I mean, you can never be 100% sure, but I, I guess you you got to try and eliminate, eliminate um, all the all the obvious suspects first, I guess, and then yeah, it's just it's just doing that research in in the market, asking plenty of questions. Um, it's good to see a product that's been out there for a long time first. Mm. Don't I don't like being the um, the first one to use a certain product either. I like to see it. Especially with batteries, you like to see them in the market for that five, five to ten years first. Let someone else sort out all the issues, and and then then we'll start using that that product. Um, but I guess it's the whole, yeah, you know, the handling of the panels as well. A lot of issues can just be from rough handling of the panels. So you've you've got to make sure that whole process, um, picking up the panels from the from the dealers um, through that installation process. Make sure you're compliant with all your spacing with your feet, your rails. Uh, so there's a lot of things that that can go can go wrong even if even if the panel is good mm. panel so yeah it's a full what about the service department of the manufacturer do you look at that how big it is if they're in australia that stuff yeah i i guess that's another important thing you want to if you want to be able to talk to the manufacturer having an australian based office um, if there are any issues i had an issue the other day with with a panel it just seemed a little bit odd it turned up um cracked i just wanted to make sure that how it was being stacked, um, how it was being delivered, um, if there's anything that we're doing wrong. But that was just a phone call, bang, someone picked up the phone and it was sorted out straight away. So, um, you know, you certainly wouldn't want to be um, ringing up someone in China and getting a, a container of panels loaded, and which is what some companies do in Australia, and uh, maybe seconds panels from, from China um, in a container and start installing them next week. It's, it's obviously going to be issues um, a year or two down the track. But um, if you're not there, not in business two years down the track, you probably don't have to worry about it. But mm -hmm. I plan to be in business for a lot longer than that. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. But if you do your research, 
um, you've been in the game long enough, then um, hopefully it'll be smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. Now, you've been around since 2004. That's really a record in the solo industry, 20 years. Have you seen a change in the install type, the panels, the inverter? Yeah, I can remember when we first started installing around that 2010, I mean, we are putting up 1.5 kilowatt uh, systems. So you actually can't buy a 1.5 kilowatt system uh, inverter today. So, um, yeah, so definitely That's systems got a small, lot. That's very small, is it? That's, well, back then the panels were a lot smaller as well. So, uh, but in today's panels, that might be three panels, three panels on a 1.5 kilowatt inverter. But that was, uh, we sold a lot of that size. So um, people's power bills, but back then a lot of them may have only been using 10 to 15 kilowatt hours a day. So a 1.5 kilowatt system to two kilowatt, that was actually quite okay for them. And, and with the feed-in tariff at the time, they could zero their bill out with that. Um, but we have some clients now coming to us and they've got a, a $2,000 a quarter power bill. Ooh. So obviously a 1.5 kilowatt system with three panels um, will only power his coffee machine. So with um, a lot of system, the, the average system over the last 12 months has been 8.8 kilowatts. So a lot of 10 to 13 kilowatt systems on residential, we've had 15 and 20 kilowatt systems on, on residential homes. But these guys had big, big power bills. So, um, yeah, definitely the systems have got a lot, a lot bigger. And the technology, has it improved over the last 15, 20 years? Yeah, definitely the efficiency of, of the panels um, has gotten better. So you're getting a lot more power per square, square metre on your roof. So you're making a lot more use um, out of your roof space. Uh, the panels are, are physically bigger as well, but they're, they're definitely a lot more efficient. So, and obviously the inverters um, are getting a lot more a lot better now as well. So not only um, the, you've got your standard grid connect inverter, you've now got your battery ready or hybrid inverters. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a lot, uh, a lot better technology now as well. How has monitoring changed? Um, monitoring has changed. Back, from back in 2010, there was no such thing as monitoring. Um, it was just plug it in. Well, actually, back then, the, the inverters all, all had a screen. So you could always tell um, what the system was doing until the sun affected the, the screen too much and you couldn't tell what it was. So then you started looking at the green light um, on the inverter. But now pretty much all the manufacturers are Wi-Fi monitoring. Um, so that's another element there that has to be set up during the installation process. But the good thing with the monitoring these days, so you're not only looking at what the system's producing, which is obviously that's only half the battle, you're looking at what your home's consuming. And it's the balance between those is what you want to get right. So um, you want to be trying to use as much of the power locally as possible um, mm. and sort of trying to restrict your exportation of energy. So it's mm. good to oversize a system and, and save as much as possible. Um, but a lot of the energy providers or network uh, providers have limitations on how much power you can put back into the grid. Um, so, yeah, you need to be able to, you need to be smarter with how you use power. So as soon as we see a, a property with a pool and hot water system, we know that there's there's good energy that we can use during the day, non-time dependent, um, that we can funnel that power from the solar directly to those, those power users. So um, you need to be able to see that on your monitoring um, so you can make make the most out of the, what the system produces. So... So in the past, you had very healthy feed-in tariff, but now exporting solar isn't worth that much anymore and the systems are getting bigger, so you produce more. What do you do? Yeah, so, I mean, that's sort of... I mean, they just had the latest update with the with the power prices, so the, the cost of power has gone up slightly and the feed-in tariff has come down slightly. So that's definitely a, a an issue and, and the only real way... Well, there's two ways. I mean, you can size a system that, that's right for you now, but if you want to sort of future-proof your system and make the most of the rebates, the upfront rebates that are available, then, you know, you do want to get a bigger solar system, but instead of wasting that power by sending it all back to the grid or allowing Ergon or your local provider to wind your system down to, to, um, to a certain level, you can install batteries. So you can, instead of putting that power out to the grid, you put it in a battery and then you use that solar power at night. Mm. So you can, yeah, you can obviously save double the amount again. Um, instead of getting that 10 to 12 cents a kilowatt, you're saving 33 cents a kilowatt at night. 
What about uh, putting aircon on a timer and then use it in the middle of the day to pre-cool the house on your solar? Yeah, I mean, you can do that, but of the, most houses that we find, they're not real, um, they're not good insulators. So, I mean, that unless you're in the home, then yes. It's sort of more about, I guess, when, when we put solar in, people tend to use more power because before they had solar, they were too scared to put the aircon on during the day <laughs> because they didn't want their bill to double. So now they, once you get solar in, those times of the day or those times of the year where you thought, geez, it's, it's bloody hot, I wouldn't mind putting the aircon on, now you can without seeing that bill shock. It's not going to cost you anything by putting the aircon on. Mm. So when people come to this and say, well, I'm going to put the aircon on all day just so I don't use the power, no, let that go to the grid. At least you get something for it. If you're home and you want to use the power, check your app. Yep, okay, I'm exporting power to the grid. I might as well use that to cool my house while I'm here, just because you're in that threshold. Right, so you've got the app. You can check what you're generating, and if you've got surplus at that point in time, no guilty, aircon can go on. Put the aircon on, yeah. yeah. That's something, yeah, it's more of a lifestyle thing, mm. but the, the perfect ones are the pool and the hot water. Right, right. Some people still have them on, on at night. Once you get solar in on a standing feed-in tariff, we set them up. Um, so they only come on during the day. So basically it turns your pool into a solar um, solar powered pool and it turns your hot water system into a solar powered hot water system. So they become literally the sinks for the spare solar to basically be used to make hot water and heat your pool. Correct. And, that, and that's probably why we, um, having that monitoring, <coughs> it allows you to be a lot smarter in in your energy usage. And then, and we say to people, um, and, and then you can collect all that information over the next year or so. If you're sort of a bit um, hesitant on getting batteries now, we say, hey, that's okay. Collect this information, this data from your monitoring, mm. see how your power usage is, see what power um, solar power is available. And then with the, with the technology that's in the inverters, we can simulate the exact size battery they need in a year or two, not just guessing up front because batteries are expensive. So you want to make sure you get that decision right. So when you've got good monitoring, you collect that data over the next year or two with a battery ready system, mm. and then you use that data to select the perfect battery right, in a right. year or two. Now, I've always wondered that, why don't you buy the cheapest panels, the cheapest inverters, make it look really sexy, put a big margin on it, and make much more profit that way? Yeah, you probably could by telling a few fibs, but it's it's a short play and, and town like Townsville, everyone knows everyone. And um, yeah, so you you make a bit of money, but it'll be a year or two and you'd be out of business. So you'd be trying to deal with the faults. You'd be trying to um, deal with all the You all just the moved to Charters Towers. Yeah, yeah, moved to... Um, yeah, no, nah, that's not going to work. So yeah, you've got to look after your customers. It's no different to, to anyone in, in any industry Really, you look at cars. Um, you know, you can make the cheapest car, and and but you're going to have issues. Or you could be the cheapest car repair guy. Cheapest car repair guy. Yeah, you, I think you have to cut corners. You have to employ the cheapest people. Mm. Um, solar installers aren't, or good solar installers aren't, aren't cheap. Just that whole process of of running a good business. Mm. Um, mm. Looking after because it is a long play. You, these solar systems aren't just a short. You know, you don't make all your money in the first year. It's it's a 10, 15, 20 year decision. But, but then the logic is the better the gear, the longer it lasts and the more money you make. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And and, and with making maybe fifteen hundred, two grand a year, even if another system is three thousand dollars cheaper, it's a year and a half wait to maybe get a system that lasts ten years young, longer. Yeah. I mean li lifetime value of a of a standard solar system, maybe a 6.6 .6 kilowatt, it, it might be a $50,000 um, savings over its lifespan. Mm, mm. So um, if you're looking at a system that might cost 10,000 compared to a system that costs five, do you really think that $5,000 system is gonna last the same amount of time? No, it'll give you 10 as back. As a, lo it'll a give professionally you installed yeah. solar system from a local installer. Um, yeah, so one saves 50 and the other one 40, then you've just lost your money anyway. Well, I don't think even the first Not even one that. will give, give you 40. It'll give you no. a five grand system will give you 10,000 back and a and then you've got to replace dollars, it. Yeah, and the $10,000 one will give you 50 back. So yeah. for the extra five, you're making an extra 40 grand. Mm. It makes sense to go for quality. Yeah, unless you're selling your house the next year, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And moving, yeah. moving. So yeah. no, definitely invest in quality. Yeah, okay. 
Now, um, let's say you got a sales guy. I don't know if you, are you the only one that sells? Or? No, no, there's, we got. Okay, so let's say you've got a sales guy and he walks in and he didn't realize it's a three phase. Uh, he's actually sold it as a single phase. You guys turn up on the day and now there are additional costs to get a good system. Do you then going to try and push, push that on to the customer? No, well that, that wouldn't wouldn't happen. So our, myself and and um, anyone else who goes out and does sale appointments, we're electricians. So that, that's probably something different to a sales company. Um, not being an electrician, they wouldn't be aware of those those things. They might have been told about it, seen a photo, um, but you know they're obviously not allowed to open a switchboard, look inside, look at the point of attachment, test test out the connection. So uh, myself and and Rob, uh, the sales guy, we're electricians. We've been in um, in the electrical game for thirty years each. Um, so those things are obviously identified early in the sales process. Um, and then in the ordering, obviously, the, the, it's a different type of inverter that needs to be ordered for that. And that's sort of done maybe two to three weeks prior to installation. Mm -hmm. So there's a few checks and balances done prior to getting in to site. Um, and in, in the Ergon area in, in North Queensland, there's certain upgrades and, and that that need to be done prior to the installation. Um, and Ergon typically, they might be a two or three month wait to book in, <coughs> uh, to book in an appointment with Ergon. To, to upgrade from single phase to three phase or or to change things. So there's there's a big electrical comp component of solar that needs to be um, identified before installation. So you really need a specialist, not just a sales guy. Yeah, and that's what I say to people, ha having a full service company, they need to be an electrical contractor. One, they need to have electricians working for them. They The electricians need to be certified um, with the solar installation and they need to have solar designer. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, have had people that aren't electricians in the past, um, unless they've been in the industry for 10, 20 years, they just can't pick up on those things. It's all about that sales process and getting you to sign the bottom line. Um, we're more about that full solution for a customer. Um, and we obviously, being electricians, we, we know what our sparkies and our installers are up against when they go to site. You really want to make sure that all that documentation, all those I's are dotted, T's are crossed prior to coming to site because it can look pretty amateurish if you miss something like three phase or – actually, there's a lot of um, houses out there with two phase and that can create mm. other problems as well. So, um, yeah, so definitely go to your electrical contractors first. But look, I do want to still – say, I mean, you guys can be as perfect if you want. You're being the boss. There will be still stuff coming your way where you go. Oh, I don't think I've ever made a mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to your wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, yeah, you, you know, you, there must be a morning where something happens and you go like this. Are you kind yeah. of a, are you a blamer or a fixer? No, nah, no. Nah, a perfect example might be, you know, you might have went to put the order in for a certain inverter that, was getting installed on Monday. The boys go to load up the trailer on Friday afternoon or Monday morning and where is it? Oh, geez, maybe I never sent the order through, but the customer's just taken the day off work and um, put the dogs in, into the kennel and the, the kids off to school. And you, know, you don't want to cancel the system because you know, it's, everything's booked in. So you sort of got to explain to the customer that um, you know, we don't have the parts for that day. So it's, yeah, it's all about communicating with the customer and, and um, making sure they're okay. We're going to have to come back and, and sort that one out. Or But would you go out and at least do the panels? or you? Yeah, we definitely try and um, do as much as possible because mm. it's booked in, every, everything's booked in. So we still want to turn up that day. There's still days too where if it, you might get, um, it might be raining that day, but we might come up and just do the switchboard or the inverter, mm. uh, do as much as possible. Sometimes too, you might get up on the roof and, and um, in the sales process or the design process, it looked like it was going to fit, but then you get to site, oh, geez, it doesn't quite fit, or we're going to go into the exclusion zones, but we still want to make sure it's all all legit. So we'll have to have, have, to have a chat with the, with the customer, explain what happened here, blame the sales guy, um, he didn't measure it properly, and then just reassure them that, yeah, this is. We're are, you not, we're not, are, you, are you really going to blame the sales guy? We're not doing this to make it easier. <laughs> we're doing this to make it work. So yeah. there's no no shortcuts. Um, yeah. So there's yeah there's a communication. 
Right. So co- you so you think decent communication with the customer is really vital to get a good outcome. Yeah, true. Yeah. So the, and there's a lot of touch points too. I mean, by the time we're installing, we've probably spoken to the customer already half half a dozen times. So um, a, a lot of our customers too, they might be in the process of building a home. Mm. And we might have done the deal with them 12 months ago and we're installing it. We're booking in for installation next month. So we've, we've had multiple conversations. Mm-hmm. We might have been out to site, put conduits in, um, done some wiring. Um, now we're back on site. Even the panel brands and sizes have changed since that as well. So there's obviously, you know, we've got to um, chat with the customer. Okay, this type isn't available anymore. We can move you to this or to this. There might be a... <laughs> Um, a discount or, or an extra cost with this, mm, mm. Uh, especially when it's a, a 12 month process with, especially with someone building a home. Mm. So yeah, I mean, the industry moves very fast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm, the, mm. the model that we sold is not available anymore and you've, mm. you've moved to something else. So usually they get higher efficient. So it's a positive. Yeah, but yeah. then you sort of, um, the number of panels, the wattage doesn't quite work out. So a lot of times they're getting, they're getting a bigger system for the, yeah, for same. the price that we sold it for. Mm, yeah. mm. Um, do you get uh, solar door knockers in Townsville? Not many, but um, yeah, they're they're still around. So um, I'm not sure how it how it goes as a as a process. All of our um, customers or p- prospects um, come to us, so either through our website, through researching what we do, or walking into our into our workshop, or referred from a friend. Um, we're certainly not down there knocking on on doors, um, yeah, most people aren't home anyway. Yeah. So it's hard enough to call call someone to book in an install, let alone mm. knock on someone's door and try and sell a solar system. I mean, my key advice to people is if you get solar sold through a door knocker, run. Because a lot of times these are backpackers that have no idea and it's all, as you said before, about getting that signature down the bottom. Coming into town, install 10, 15 system, whatever you sold, go away like locusts eat all the leaves and piss off and never be back. Yeah, I've heard that out at um, Charters Towers where just a white bus would pull up in the street. <laughs> Ten people would jump out of the van, knock every knock on every door down the street. And, um, yeah, I mean, they still get the get some work. Yeah, I can't believe um, that yeah. actually happened. But it does sometimes promote a lot of work as well. Like we'll know when the door knockers are out because we'll start getting phone calls. <laughs> so oh, we just had a door knocker and they're obviously awaken uh, to it. Or unsolicited phone calls, um, a lot of that as well. Right, right. Okay. Um, the installation process, you know, you said sometimes you talk to customers multiple times. How do you explain the installation process and just put me through what's involved? I guess on the day of installation, well, it probably happens a week out. So we book our installs in possibly a week out just so that our customers can organise either a day off or access yeah. or because there is a bit of a – there's a handover process once the solar gets installed, plus there's a few signatures and that. So we at least try and get the customer home by sort of the end of the day or, or when the system's about to get um, finished. Um, rock up to the to the house, there's usually around three, three installers. It starts with um, going over the installation package, make sure we got all the bits and pieces right, the right panels, the right inverter, the right quantity um, of components. And just discussing with the customer, okay, this is where we decided on the panels will go. This is where we decided the inverter goes. Check that the um, Wi-Fi is is okay where we're going to be installing the the system. And then pretty much the guys all split up. One might be at the switchboard doing. There may be a power outage during the day at some stage as well. Um, there'll be some cabling going on between the inverter downstairs where the switchboard is up to the panels. There'll be some guys on the roof installing the rails um, and then panels. Generally, everything gets wrapped up in in the one day. Uh, with bigger systems, it can be two days. And then there's just a small training uh, session afterwards, setting up the app so people are familiar with how the monitoring works. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's a pretty pretty quick process. Who, who to call if there's an issue? Yeah, yeah, in the in the documentation. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they've already spoken with us multiple times with the office or myself mm-hmm. or the other sales guy. Mm. Um, and then the installers as well. And then usually within a week or two, um, if they're not too busy, the, the documentation gets all done up and, and emailed out to the customers as well. Um, but then there's usually in that first month, there might be a few questions. Um, it's all new uh, to them. Most people only ever get one system. So it's all always pretty new. Uh, mm. There might be a few phone calls with 
determining what information they're seeing, although they might get some alarm come through and, oh, what's this? And, um, but most people in the business, whoever they talk to on the phone, can, can usually iron, iron those things out. So you value after-sales service? Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, it's nothing for us to, to pop out if someone's, um, someone's not sure if something's quite working properly or they're unfamiliar with something. Um, we can just duck in and, and check, check it over explain. the next couple of days, explain if they're not, not quite sure. A lot, a lot of things can just be done, done over the phone because mm. um, it's all so new. Uh, a lot of people are just not quite sure what the information means on the screen. We can just talk them through that. Everywhere's pretty close in Townsville as well. So we might be on our way to another install the next day. Guys can, can drop in, um, ch have a quick chat with them and, and then sort it out from there. So, and usually within sort of a year or two, whether they've, um, they've got a plan where we, where we come out automatically after 12 months, um, mm. and service the system or multiple years have gone down the track, they've got our information, they can contact us anytime. Mm. And um, we're always seeing our existing customers, whether it be for, for upgrades or if it's uh, some sort of warranty issue, we can process that. But they don't even need to be our customers either. So we obviously get a lot of people with older systems from other people that contact us to, to sort things out as well. So that's, mm. that's no dramas. So we've always got one person that's constantly doing maintenance and repairs work. At True North Solar, the people that work for you, your crews, are they subbies? They come and go all the time. What's the story? No, so they're definitely our own own staff. So they're all employed by us. So we usually got um, a lead installer. He's got all the qualifications. There might be maybe a labourer with him and an apprentice. So that's sort of minimum. There might be two qualified electricians on each site, but there has to be one at least that's qualified um, to be able to sign off on the on the certificates. And, and the job. So the, we tend to have two, three, three crews going any one day. Um, I, I tend to do a couple of systems a month as well. The boys boys are busy. I don't tend to do all the heavy lifting. I sort of got to hold one side and uh, with my two bung shoulders. Um, but yeah, so we always, we, and we've got good, good staff as well. Um, but do you think the staff makes a difference in the way the system's installed? Yeah, definitely. And I think the um, the checklist we have at the end as well. So we've got a good um, commissioning app that goes through all the steps, all the little, there's about 500 little jobs involved wow. in a solar system installation. So when you say, oh, geez, you, you missed that thing. How, how on earth did you miss that? Well, there's 500 items that you've got to go through on each and every solar system from, um, you know, little things spraying the earth on the on the rails or you know do your making sure your terminations are all tight making sure every single clamps down make sure they're tight and make sure your cables are clipped up so you know with that with our app we try and identify all those common problems that we've missed in our auditing process we we go back into our auditing sheet and we add that item back in so the next time we try and eliminate all those little bits and pieces. So you only pick that up in an auditing process. I mean, you can go through with your head in the sand and think you're doing everything properly, but there's a lot of things involved in each and every solar system. So you do need your own guys because then you, you're seeing those guys every day, every morning, every afternoon mm. as well. I'm out on, out on site with those guys a couple of times um, a month as well. And you can see what they go through each and every day, especially in summer in Townsville. It's brutal. Um, so, yeah, you just need to make sure that all those little problems that you come across, especially common problems, they're getting sorted out and you limit the amount of times that it happens happens again. If you had subbies, a lot of bigger companies might just use subcontractors where they'll probably never see them, guys. They probably don't even know who they are. Um, they've just send a quote out, get a quote back. Yep, you do it. You know, they know nothing about the client. Um, where our, our installers know everything about the client. They've got all the details there. Mm. They know when they signed up, they know what they're getting. So it's a lot more personal. And subbies normally try to get the job done quickly because that's how they make the most money. Yeah, and that's, I, I guess, with the with the cheaper systems, if you're going out to site and you're getting, a, as a subbie, and you're getting a set price to install that system, you look at a job and the switchboard's there and there's a nice pretty roof that's not, you shouldn't be putting solar there, it's right beside the switchboard and the inverter, all nice neat rows of screws there, that's where it's going. So whether you like it or not, and they'll probably just tell the customers some, some story about how that's the best spot. 
just so they can get in and out because otherwise they're just going to lo lose money. Where but in this case, it might be an eastern roof and they only get good production in the morning, but they use most of their uh, electricity in the afternoon and then they actually got a solar system that's not fit for purpose. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, we're always trying to um, spread a system out as much as possible. Back in the old days, you used to try and get everything facing the north because it would produce slightly more than any other direction. Whereas these days, it's you really want to have as many directions as possible. I mean, east and west is probably ideal, just to, so you don't get that massive peak in the middle of the day. You're starting the system as early as possible and you're finishing the system as late as possible in the afternoon. So yeah. you get more of an opportunity to use that power as it's being produced. Mm. So, I mean, I mean, that's all done in our design process. Plus we're doing drawings and that prior to installation as well. Um, yeah, so it's never about what's the easiest solution. I mean, we've been on some difficult roofs um, just to make sure that the system's producing not only as much power as possible, but at times that's more relevant to the customer's usage. Mm -hmm. Townsville, you're not too far away from Cairns and even further up Darwin. The rails, are they important? I mean, I can't see them. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she can get pretty windy up up there during during summer so there's, there's definitely a process not not only the, the quality of the rails but the installation process make sure you're you're going over the guidelines of the feet spacing of the rail system and and also the material you're screwing into to ensure that it complies with the with the cyclone ratings so you want you know as long as possible warranties with the with the railing but you want to make sure that the feet spacing in that is within the guidelines to ensure that it's going to not blow, blow off your roof. But if I have a maybe five, six less feet overall, I say 50 bucks. Yeah, that's right. You, you could, but um, yeah, you can certainly do a lot of damage as well. We pref prefer to go overboard. So we we put our, our feeding spacing, it's about 800 where you, you could go out to 1100 really. Um, there's some, and you, you, you drive past some systems in Townsville and there's two meter spacings. Ooh. So there's obviously someone that's come up from uh, maybe Tasmania or, or <laughs> Victoria or something as a subby, and they've they've looked in their their pack, their kit that's been given to them. There's you know 12 feet, but there should have been 24. Yeah, they're not going to waste half a day to um, go chase up some feet. They'll just space them out for how many ever feet they got. So with us, we got unlimited amount of feet spacing, so we can put in as as many as we like. So yeah, be, be, definitely better than more more feet spa, um, more feet per meter. Mm. Than less. Nowadays, is it more worth it to go with solar only or buy solar and battery? Well, it depends on the on the situation. I mean, they need to get at least get solar to get to get a start on. That's where you save save the most amount. But to get that energy independence and future proof your system and really have have an insurance policy against low feed in tariffs, that's when you need to invest in batteries. Mm. And are you getting more and more people selling batteries and buying batteries? Yeah, definitely getting a lot more inquiries uh, with batteries. But I guess you've got to really have that um, good finance system set up in the back end and um, to, to put of, in batteries. You need a bit of cash in your pocket. Is that what you're saying? Well, probably a little bit of cash up front would, would help because, I mean, uh, you know, a system can do easily double in price if you're getting a good, mm. a good battery. Look, my argument nowadays is if you're going to solar only, you might have a payback of three years, three to four years, okay? But if you go solar and battery, if you push it into a VPP and if you use that battery power later on on an EV, you may be sitting at six-year payback, seven. But you've done it. It's done. you got the comfort. You get blackouts. I would argue nowadays if it's me and if I have the funds, I just get it all done in one go. Yeah, I mean, the installate, there's a lot of rules and regulations around batteries as well. So, I mean, being a technician, an electrician in the background when I'm looking at um, a house and they're starting to talk a little bit about batteries and you're looking at the house and you're thinking, oh, my God, this is not going to be allowed to be even installed here. So there's a lot of, lot of safety issues uh, with batteries. New homes, I think it's perfect. So if someone's looking at uh, building a new home, then you've really got the, you've got the open slather of, of you know, going into the garage or, or really picking an area that you can put the batteries in. It can be a, a, a lot more um, costly with older, especially old timber homes. Because you need to find a safe spot where you to put... You need to find a safe spot and that's where um, 
So they have to have a, a, a fibro backing and yes. a fireproof area, that kind of thing? Yeah, and that's where sort of the mind boggles when you've got salespeople running around selling battery systems. They just do not know the back end and the safety requirements around that. It's a, it's a minefield to to deal with. So I just got the sale. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. He got the sale. <laughs> he, he got the commission. So he's he's laughing. But, I mean, the, yeah, there's going to be a lot of – a lot of issues out there from people just willy nilly putting in batteries. There's there's a big process that needs to go go through to pick the right the right spot. But um, if the house complies and everything's good, then yeah, definitely worthwhile. So if I go with True North, you give me honest advice if it's worth it. Yeah, well, there's been there's been a few where I've said, look, this house isn't suitable. Um, mm. You can get it from someone else, but from us, so yeah, I, I want to sleep at night. So you need to make sure it complies with all the rules and regulations. Okay, got that. Um, if I, let's say I'm a new customer, I'm thinking about solar because my electricity bill is 1400 bucks. How do you work out what my future savings will be? With our, um, I guess mom, first of all, doing this for solar since 2010, it's sort of the, the data doesn't, doesn't lie. So we could rattle it off the top of our head, but to show the customer and actually to work it out, we, we write it out. We can write it out. This is how much you're exporting. This is how much you're, you're using locally. This is how much the cost of power is locally. Um, plus on top of that, with our software program, once we we enter in all their usage habits, their power bill, um, the cost of power, the cost, the price of the feed-in tariff, all this works out and the data, the data shows up what you save. Right. So you're going to give them really very thorough calculations and they're based on your last 15 years of experience, is it? Correct. Mm. Okay. Now, I hear this term smart home all the time. I'm not smart enough to understand what the bloody smart home <laughs> is all about. What's a smart home? How does it fit with EVs and batteries or is it just a trendy term? It sounds sounds like a trendy, a trendy term to me. Um, as far as the energy and solar side of thing goes, I guess it's, it's making the most out of having intelligent background in, say, your inverter. Um, or other components to get the most out of the solar power that you're producing. So, you know, diverting excess power to hot water systems or using timers to control pools or um, having a smart car charger to make sure your car charge pulls power from the solar once you start exporting uh, too much uh, too much power to the grid. So, yeah, as far as uh, energy goes, just making smarter decisions around mm. your energy usage. But when, what about then, for example, that the blinds automatically can come up and down and that the lights, let's say I come home, home at 7 o'clock, but for in winter at 5 o'clock the lights turn on automatically and as I drive yeah. into the driveway the garage door automatically opens. Is that our future? That probably is our future, not in my suburb and not in my <laughs> house at the moment, but it certainly would, would be um, the way to go. Yeah, so you, know, you wake up, press the button, morning, um, all the blinds open up and the windows on a certain side open up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's um, certain like C-bus controllers and things like that, mm -hmm. automation um, in your home to do that. Um, I just like to turn a light switch on and the light comes on and when I want it to turn it off, I turn it off. So you're not a Jetson kind of guy? No, no, I don't have a... Um, I don't have a rocket ship. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um Let's say you, I want to find out a bit more about the Townsville folk because Townsville is, when I arrived from Germany, I migrated to Australia. My first place I went to was Townsville. And I went down to the beach and the first thing I did is stepped in a crown of thorn starfish. So that's my first experience in town, Townsville. And I picked them off one by one and I thought, bloody tourist. And then I went to Magnetic Island, took my shirt off. And with the Dead next degree morning, burns. Yeah, next morning I had the biggest bloody sunburn. <laughs> So, um, but people were very friendly. Uh, I bought an Austin A40 Varina. I didn't know what that is. That's a very old car. I bought that in Townsville for five twenty-five. So, I have very vivid memories of Townsville. Mm. But uh, are the folks kind of nice, or are they a bit more critical, or they kick your ass if you stuff it up? Oh, I think you definitely cop it if you um, if you stuffed up. That's for sure. But um, I did, being a very work orientated. Uh, town, everyone's, um, I mean, people are trustworthy, that's for sure. I mean, we walk into strangers' homes every day, 
Um, but I guess people know a lot about us as well. You know, they're not just randomly calling us or, or something. They're looking at our website. They've uh, read our reviews. and I mean, you've got a local presence after 20 years. Yeah, they do sort of, I, I, I tend to know us before we go in there. So that mm. bit of trust is, is already there. But I think with that um, that real work orientated community with you know we've got big mining division as as well uh, a lot of army people um, actually we we get actually get a lot of Ergon customers getting solar that tells you even people that work at Ergon no powers to cost too much so um, no it, it, it's a good it's a good place to um, good place to have a business right are there any kind of horror stories with solar where you end up at a system and you go oh my god what happened here yeah we've um, done various audits on systems where the customer had an inkling that there was something uh, something wrong and um, we get out there and do an order on it and yeah as I said before I mean feet spacing at, at two meters there's panels hanging over the top of the roof you know what just like a bit of a wind yeah sail. or the or the rails um, the panels like a springboard hanging over oh. over one end incorrect cabling not earthed um, exposed cablings uh, live cables in switchboards. Um, and then w- one time I remember talking to the customer, I said, D- did you get sort of an inkling that there was something um, something wrong during the installation process? Uh, and he said, well, it was just a young, it was an apprentice by himself sitting under the switchboard reading the rule book on solar. I said, that was probably a flag, <laughs> a red flag for um, it wasn't going to end up well. And it was just a complete... Removal. There's been a couple where we've referred to the electrical safety office as well. Like um, these are like dangerous situations that could be life threatening uh, with with some systems that we've inspected. So yeah, there's definitely um, a lot of horror stories out there. Solar cowboys and solar sharks. Solar cowboys, yeah. But you would hope that none of these are, would be local companies. Um, yeah, never never knew who who done it, but yeah, it's scary. Mm-hmm. Panel position is it important in in towns where you get you get away with it a bit more? I mean, down south, you know, they they're using a lot of tilt kits to get the angle and that. Townsville's positioned where the the roof angle is always pretty good, but direction you obviously need that good good direction. And as people put in bigger and bigger systems, um, l- lucky a lot of the roofs in Townsville are big as well, so you can tend to fit up to that sort of around that ten kilowatt. Um, but generally, positioning-wise, you're always looking for that um, unshaded east and west roofs. Sometimes you can get some shade issues, um, but you can usually design that out of a system. The inverters are a lot smarter these days. The panels are a lot better uh, with eliminating minor shade issues. Um, so you want to sort of start as high as possible in the roof um, and then work your way down from there and try and spread the panels out a little bit so you can get multiple directions. Don't mm. just face it all the, all the one way. I mean, for anybody who listens, if you use a lot of electricity in the morning, you want some panels on the east. If you use a lot of uh, electricity in the afternoon, you want the panels on the west. So the panel position kind of got to align possibly with the consumption a bit. Yeah, that's right. I mean, but people are oversizing their systems that much as well. So um, if you are sort of sizing the system directly to what the usage is, then you really have to be mindful of, of what they're using. But if you're oversizing the system, I mean, we're, we've had some homes there where the system was a lot bigger than what they needed, but they just wanted, wanted the future proof it and they didn't have to have, have to go back because they might have been looking at getting an EV or something down the track. Um, we even put some panels on the south side of the roof, which we've never done, but that was the next available roof. Make use of the best roof position first, second best, third best. If they still want to go bigger, then mm. you can make use of um other directions as well. And look, south is actually not as bad because it still gives you 65 to 70 percent depending on the time of the year. In summer, yeah. it's actually very I mean, if, if that's what's available and a lot of times they're in, especially in Townsville, their highest power usage is at the time in summer where the sun actually does go back over the, mm. the top, so about eight degrees or whatever. Mm. So mm-hmm. uh, if it's not too steep on the south, then that's yeah. fine. True North Solar, do you get any decent Google reviews? Yeah, we do actually. So we've got the, um, obviously the Google places. You get your Google reviews there where, where pretty much anyone, hopefully just customers, put Google reviews up there and hopefully five stars, which most of them are. Um, and then 
via our website. People can go through that way. Um, and then on, on site, we're generally trying to promote the Google reviews, super important for people to get, um, it's almost treated as a, as a referral, a Google review in people's minds. So they get a real, especially with some, not, not just ticking five stars, that's good, I thank people for that, but it's good to see a bit of a story, a bit of a background, a bit of context behind the Google review as well. So um, yeah, that's something that we, that we build on uh, each year. It is, does sometimes put people um, a little bit out of place, everyone's busy and, and people mightn't be logged in, but they're definitely valuable to a business. Um, not always five star, there can be, for whatever reason, um, someone might give you a, a lower rating, but it's about communicating with that person, finding out what happened, and then trying to resolve the issue with the customer. Do you know how many you got and what your ranking is? Um, at the moment, I think it's I think it's under a hundred, might be eighty mm. um, and four point eight, four point nine, something like that. Well, that's pretty close to five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ra- round it off. Look, I mean, there are things that's uh, fake Google reviews with the big um, national companies. They got like 600 and you read it and you go, this has been created overseas in one of those Google review centers. Yeah. My advice then is to read the, the low ones because in those big companies, the low ones are the honest ones. The five-star ones for those $2,990 systems they're usually the ones that they got fabricated. So my advice is check the low ones because you get the true picture there. Yeah, I've definitely looked at a lot of those companies that advertise on TV. It was only, actually only six months ago when um, a lot of the bad bad Google reviews and all of a sudden they've disappeared. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so I don't know how that, that – but I printed them out though so I can see what they were. So mm. I guess if you've got that big budget, you can make them make them go away. I, I don't know how you do it, but uh, I suppose uh, dollars talk. Mm. Yeah. But look, being a local company, uh, you would also get a lot of referrals from friends and family? Yeah, so that's a big big part of our business. So um, during the sales process or when someone rings up, um, we're always asking people, you know, how did you find out about us? Was it, you know, Google reviews or were they just searching on the internet? And at least 30% of times it's, oh, no, Bob from down the road or Kay from up the street or my cousin or my friend or mm. or whatever. So that that's reassuring to me. Whenever I hear that, I say, oh, wow, that's that's so good. Um, you got to be careful when you refer. You know, people are always very careful when they refer someone. You don't want to – you're not going to refer someone rubbish or, mm. or mm. someone that done a dirty on you. So you've got to be pretty trustworthy for the service and the total package that you got to be able to tell a family friend or, or someone to, hey – you, you know, go, go get your other quotes or whatever, but before you do anything, have a chat with True North Solar and, and see what you reckon. So, yeah, that's that's very reassuring. Because you really take the responsibility to some degree by referring because if that goes sideways, mm. um, they'll come back to you and say, what happened there? Yeah, I even know myself when, you know, you might whatever, get some air cons installed and someone asks you, oh, who done that? And yeah, it was yeah. You just you try and think back to what that process was like for yourself. Mm, and you you mm. sort of want to make sure that it was that it was a positive experience mm. before you um, pass those details on to on to someone else. Mm. But typically, those people, and a lot of time it's neighbours as well. So yeah, you know, they might be yarning over the fence, and at least they can see it. They can get the story off off the homeowner. Mm. They have a look up the system. They might pop over. They check the inverter. Okay, that looks pretty neat. I don't mind that. And then they'll give us a ring. So yeah, um, yeah they do a lot of research. Uh, we tend to get the people that are well-researched. They just about know as much about solar as us by the time they walk through our door or by the, by the time they, they call us up, which is good. I, I love chatting solar and um, I'll sit there with people and, mm. and chat about solar. Mm. That, that's no dramas. Can you explain the different warranties when it comes to solar and batteries? So with, with the panel warranties, it was, was only a few years ago that the maximum panel warranty you would get as far as a product warranty was about 10 years. So that was sort of your hard warranty is what we say. Then they sort of had the, I call the smoke and mirror warranty, which was sort of 25 years or, or 100 years. So they tend to make that up. So I just don't think there was an avenue for people to pursue a performance warranty. It all seemed to come back down to the product warranty. So in the last couple of years, most manufacturers now have moved their product warranty to 25 years. Uh, the The premium panel we've got, Waneco, it's actually got a 30 year uh, product warranty as well. So um, the product warranty is is the most important 
um, one with with solar panels. So that's the one to look for. Uh, with batteries, they tend to they do have a product warranty as well, but it tends to be a pro rata battery warranty. So um, based on the value of the battery, if it's got a ten year warranty at year eight, um, you might have a failure. Then obviously, <laughs> if it's only got two years left, then it might be pro rata out to two years. So it can be complex the battery warranties, um, but with the product warranties of panels, it's pretty. It's, it, it's pretty straight up now that it, that's what the warranty is, mm. regardless of what happens. What about uh, solar inverter warranties? How does True North handle that? Solar inverter warranties? My, the manufacturers are actually pretty good. So probably five years ago, most of the um, inverter manufacturers, their warranties were five years. That's all you could get from an inverter manufacturer. Mm. And, you know, there were some issues with um, certain manufacturers, but... Most of them are really good. They just send out a new inverter. They pay us to um, swap the inverter out and the customer get a new inverter. Uh, but now pretty much all the manufacturers now with residential inverters, they're all 10 years. And that's, and that's what you want. I think yeah, minimum 10 years for an inverter. Uh, that's what most of them are now. Um, can be a little bit of a convoluted process. You do rely on your original installer usually to process any warranties. Um, it's difficult if you're not the installer. Um, or sometimes they can make it difficult. Um, but yeah, with all the manufacturers we use, they're never perfect, but maybe there's a 0.1% of inverters. Some inverters can just fail out of the box. That's okay. With us, it's okay. We keep spare inverters at the workshop. If there's an issue, bang, we've got another inverter there ready to go. But the, if there is an issue within the 10 years, it's just a phone call to us or, or a message might pop up on our screen that there is an issue with an inverter. We contact the manufacturer, process a, a warranty application, new inverter turns up, we contact the customer, swap it over, the inverter manufacturer pays us to install it. Um, so usually within a few weeks, it's it, it's all done. Mm. Um, I heard in solar uh, there is such a thing as workmanship warranty. Do you have that at True North Solar? Yeah, well, I say with um, workmanship warranty, pretty much in every under – Every other industry, it's sort of maximum five. But uh, with solar, it seems to be 10 years minimum. Everyone just seems to pluck 10 years out and then you see others' lifetime workmanship warranty. Um, but they say with, with any sort of warranty, even with product warranties, <coughs> you generally you can generally administer a warranty at half the time what you think the panels will, will last. So if you're issuing a 25-year warranty, then typically you want to you need to expect that panel would last 50 years before you can write up a 25-year warranty. So looking at from a workmanship point of view, if you're issuing a 10-year a workmanship warranty, you want to be pretty confident that that thing's going to last double that mm. or the business needs to be in in business for double what they're offering as a warranty, as a workmanship warranty. So if there's a company that's been in business for one year, and they're saying, hey, it's a lifetime workmanship warranty. Really, what is that warranty worth? It's not worth anything. It's only worth the period of time that they've been in business. Mm. So I'll be if you see a, a t even a 10-year um, workmanship warranty, if they haven't been in business for at least 10 years, the likelihood of calling on that workmanship warranty if it blows off your roof or there's some there's a leak or, or something is zero. They're not going to be around. So mm. that's where I... I we limit our workmanship warranty at 10 years because I've been around 20. So I'm happy to issue a 10 year workmanship warranty that actually means something because I've got a proven history that we've been around for at least that long. But what is included in the workmanship warranty? I guess it's all those those little bits and pieces. Something comes off a wall or the cables come loose on the roof. Um, is some it screws everything with missing. Is it everything linked with the installation part, is it? Yeah, as far as it's, so everything but the product warranty of the panels and the product <laughs> warranty of the inverter. Every every other component would be would come under your workmanship warranty. Everything so, that you can see, how it's installed, mm. the thing might fall off or um, something's not done right in the switchboard, um, even come down to the monitoring side of things. So, yeah, all those other components other than the panels and inverter. So yeah. there can be a lot of little little things that go wrong. Um, Do you get a lot of uh, workmanship warranty claims at True North? Uh, it's limited now. There, there were a big issue with rooftop isolators. That sort of plagued the industry for, for 10 years. No one could keep water out of um, rooftop isolators, but, but we were forced to use them 
because that's what the laws were. Fin finally, probably two years ago, um, you don't put rooftop isolators on anymore. So that that's limited a lot of the mistakes, mm. Um, mm. a lot of the problems. That was a big workmanship warranty um, thing back in back in. Which the time. wasn't really your problem. It was in the way it was designed, and the the standard asked you to in, put it in, in the standards. Yeah, but it it was our. It ended up being our problem, even though every electrician in the country knew that it was going to be a problem. Mm. We still had to do it because that was the laws at the time. Mm. But it, you can still have cabling issues, um, connector issues. Um, you know, or your, your your attachments that go through the roof with your cabling, mm. um, switchboard issues. So, yeah, all those things are covered. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm on a budget and the only reason I'm going solar is because my power bill was just so high. And my budget either allows for a bit of a better inverter and a bit cheaper on the panels or a bit cheaper on the inverter and a bit better panels. Which way should I go? You can always... Um, Mix and mix and match. Um, it's definitely always better to invest in a better better panel. That's the thing that's exposed to the most brutal elements. Um, but there's lots of finance packages that are available now with with the banks and and other specialty financiers. We use use Plenty, and it's sort of built into our our sales platform. So, I mean, there's opportunities there to get any system you want and. Even under finance, it's a cash flow positive decision. So you're you're in front from day one. So, so you're saying the payback that I have to do weekly or monthly for my solar system is going to be less than the money I save on the bill, is it? Yeah, correct. So you're so from day one, or say if your um, your repayments are monthly, your savings from month one are more than what your repayments are. So the only way to go backwards is if you don't have solar at all. So really. Having a power bill, paying your local energy provider is like having a lifetime loan, mm, really. Mm, mm. Whereas you can shorten that to to five years, five or seven years, depending on what type of system you get. You don't even need um, money up front. You can be cash flow positive from day one with solar. It doesn't cost you anything. It costs you not to go solar, basically. Right, right. Wow, wow. EVs, are they starting to become popular in Townsville? You definitely see a lot of um, Teslas driving around. Um, we've, we've put in a few EV chargers and, and a lot of people, I'm surprised at the amount of people that talk about it though, compared to how many people actually have one. <laughs> so, well, I, actually I like the one, how do you know if someone owns a Tesla? They they'll, talk, they they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that includes Tesla batteries too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're definitely good with the marketing there everyone yeah a lot of big percentage of our customers are saying oh when when they're talking about what size system they're always saying at the end of that conversation oh we're sort of thinking about getting an ev in the next couple of years so everyone everyone's thinking about it mm -hmm. and i mean it makes makes sense i think everyone's second car eventually will be will be an ev it's just why not but mm -hmm. you do there is that infrastructure question at the back end i think you know most charging is going to be done at home, but most people are they get home in the afternoon. Maybe the solar's well. That's where you need down. a battery. Yeah, that's where put, you put a big solar, put big battery. Then you come home, you fill up your EV, and yeah. you're saving yourself two and a half grand in petrol cost every year. Yeah, correct. And and the other thing is, or depending on the the length of their trip in their EV car, the ideal um, one would be charging it during the day on the weekend, mm. if if they can uh, facilitate facilitate that but then you, you're going to have ev cars that are bi-directional as well so that would um that'd be exciting so that's where the battery in the ev backs the house up can pa provide power to the house mm. so um i mean i can see yeah you're going to need a bigger roof to put these <laughs> solar panels on down the down the track that's for sure because if you run a normal consumption for a house let's make it 25 kilowatt hours yeah Plus you have two EVs and you drive maybe 80 Ks a day with Probably two. Gonna, so then you basically need at least a 12, 15, 20 yeah, kilowatts system. 10, 10 to 20 kilowatts mm. really mm. if they still want to be um, offset completely. But, you know, people have to be realistic as well. I mean, um, yeah, maybe people just have to build bigger houses. Oh, but what about getting the efficiency of the panels up? Has that happened? Yeah, there's definitely, um, I mean, there's micro in, um, in increments with the panel efficiency over the years. I mean, I think they're at like 23 or 24% uh, 
uh, now. But yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, you, you got to make the most use of the of the roof roof mm. you have. Mm. Mm. But I think yeah, the, the EV is definitely going to create another. I mean, it could double the home's consumption, really. Mm. So um, yeah, you can only, they, they can only produce so much though. So you advise maybe if you go solar now, just whack it on the whole roof. Yeah, I mean. It was only a few years ago where maybe we were still sizing systems based on what they're using, but uh, with the the cost of solar just just keeps coming down. Um, even even with the rebates coming down, the cost of solar comes down. So that the net out, outlay by the customer hasn't really changed too much for a quality system over the last sort of ten years or eight years really. Mm. So um, at the moment, with the rebate coming down each year, there's definitely a there's definitely incentive there to get the biggest solar system that you can because the rebate is worked off how many solar panels you have or the, the, the kilowatt size of, this, of the total system, regardless of what it's producing. So it's really incentivized to get the biggest system possible. Even with the single phase system, you still want to go as big as possible because everyone's consumption is in, increasing a lot more EVs. And by having a bigger system, even if it's not quite facing the right way, you still got that spillover in the morning and afternoon where you're, where you're really capturing that breakfast and dinner consumption, mm, which mm. is where most people is really high. What about the, the looks of panels? I've seen some houses and maybe they lost $10,000 in the value just of the ugliness of the solar. Uh, the savings were just lost through the house yeah. value. Um, yeah, I don't often bring that one up to customers, but I, I certainly think about it if I'm looking at a house and you look at the – um, solar and not too much of the individual aspect of a of a solar panel. Uh, I mean, I find them sexy, but not that sexy. It's how it's installed. Yes. So we, we sort of, when we sort of um, go very, to install, I still want it symmetrical. Mm, yeah, on a very hickledy pickledy sometimes, you know. Yeah, you might see a couple over here, a couple on an angle, and, not and, quite straight. And not properly lined up and all yeah. of that. And we, but we get a few few customers where they they are mindful of that. And even though the, the streetscape was probably the, my number one pick of where to put it. I always sort of ask, oh, look, do you mind? Mm. Um, have you got anything wrong with having panels on the street side? You know, dad might say no, but mum might say, yeah, I do have a problem. So we put them somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that can be an issue. So, and, and that's exactly right with what you said. Why, why devalue your home by five grand by having a, a system all over the place when you can make use of a different area or – in, install it symmetrical and, and still make it look nice yeah, as well. Yeah. What about commercial solar? Sometimes the payback is even better than with residential. Do you get those customers? Yeah, it just ast it astounds me how there's, um, especially small businesses, businesses that would benefit from systems um, up to around that 30 or 40 kilowatt, mm. um, why they don't have solar. That, we've done some calculations, a two-year payback. So you're talking like a 50% return on investment um, wow. Yeah, it's just, it's astronomical. So I guess with business, I mean, there's a lot of other decisions that are going on in their day-to-day -day basis. They're, they're making on average, you know, 500 different decisions a day and, and trying to get that time to um, set that up to get it done. It, it can be difficult for small business um, and whether they're going to be there or what's their sort of, what are their goals, what are their ambitions, are they moving shop, do they own own the warehouse things like that. Mm. So it does limit your customer base down a little bit. Um, but if they're a daytime business, it just makes makes perfect sense. And it, even under under finance as well, once again, can be cash flow positive from day one. Mm. I and mean, I always try to ex explain to business uh, business people as well, you know, sit down for an hour with me. Let's, let's just go through all the different things and the numbers. A 30 kilowatt system might save them 100 grand over the next 10 years. And it's only an hour out of your time. Mm. Where else can you get a hundred grand an hour? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, just just need to spend that time time with them. Mm. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice. I'd love to be doing um, those size systems every week because I just know how much money it'd be better than a lot better than super. That's for sure. Mm. So uh, for anybody who has a business, if you got a childcare center, if you got a you're a dentist, if you got a car wash, anywhere where you use a decent amount of power during the daylight hours, solar is an absolute match and a moneymaker for you. Mm. Just keeps keeps churning away in the back in the background. You don't have to spend any time on it. Mm. Mm. No. Some people are probably just too busy to worry about it. Too busy. I know I, 
I was back in the um, 44 cent feed in tariff days. I already had a 10 kilowatt system mm. on my on my roof. This was um, about two th- at our workshop where we're still still in today, same spot, um, 2012. And I think it was just about to run out the 44 cent feed in tariff. And we were busy getting every single other person in Townsville trying, you know, so they wouldn't miss out. Yeah. I put my application in to expand mine to 30 kilowatt, but I done everyone else's first and I forgot to, to put, to <laughs> expand mine. So yeah, I missed out on, on all that as well. So, um, you put the customer first. Yeah. Who would have thought? <laughs> I've been kicking myself ever since. Oh, <laughs> no. no, I think true north putting the customer yeah. first. That's why you've been around for 20 years. Now, um, you said for commercial, there are finance options for commercial solar. Yeah, so you got your green green loans, which is um, basically just a, a, a private um, loan facility through either your, your local bank um, provider or institute. Um, that can be set up pretty pretty easily, um, either yourself or, or, or through us. Um, and there's also PPAs as well. So PPAs tend to be a lot longer, so they tend to be a minimum of 15 years. PPA stands for Power Purchase Agreement. Power Purchase Agreement. Whereby yeah. you buy the, the power that your system generates at the lower rate that you would normally pay for power. Correct. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. But you tend to pay for all the power producers, not just the power that or from the solar that you use locally. Right. So and a lot of times when you work it out, over the 15 years where you've got to buy that, buy that power that the system produces – you're still going to have your power bill from your provider. It's going to be obviously a lot lower, but then you're going to have to pay for the the, the power that the solar produces. Albeit it's going to be a lot less, <coughs> but over the 15 years, it, it can still cost twice as much as, as even getting a loan over 15 years because of the length of time. Mm. So obviously the best, the most cost effective is obviously if you've got the capital there to um, invest, 40 to 50% return on your money, that's pretty good. Otherwise, just borrow over a five-year period. Um, that's your second best financial option or the third one. If you got no ex- – if none of those two first two options are available, you don't have the money or you can't borrow the money, then obviously PPA is still better than doing nothing at all. Mm-hmm. You're still mm-hmm. going to save money from day one. But because basically True North has had so many experience with so many commercial players, if you do get an inquiry, whichever one the circumstances are, you should be able to assist them. Yeah, easy. Yeah, so, uh, no one should miss out. So if you've got commercial solar in mind, give True North a call. Five bucks, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a um, price price per, per sale. <laughs> now solar panels, they sit on the roof, not much to do. Any maintenance are required for a system? Yeah, I mean, there is the, the general maintenance, which is – say around the electrical side of things, making sure your connections are, um, are all tight, um, checking the cabling, making sure it's all supported, not rubbing on the roof. Uh, then there's the cleaning cleaning of the panels. Depending on where they are, if you're in an established neighbourhood the with not too many big trees, um, maybe every year or every second year washing the panels. But in some areas in older suburbs where they've got the big trees and a lot of bats around and and that then some of the panels can be really bad in, in six months. Or, or if it's, say, a newer area and there's not, not much grass around, there can be a lot of dust um, and still a lot of construction activities. They, those panels can get dirty pretty quick as well. Um, you know, if someone's sort of young and, and fit and able, um, even just a simple wash from the ground, as long as you get the, the main parts off, it's okay. But anyone older or, or, or whatever... We, we advise them not to go on the roof. It's not worthwhile getting up on the roof to wash the panels to, to save an extra $5 a year. Over 60, you just don't bounce. No, it's uh, it's pretty dangerous. So, I mean, we've got all the safety equipment and that to set up uh, mm. to do to do the cleaning. So, yeah, so we've always got someone running around doing, doing cleaning and maintenance. And we tie that into our repairs and maintenance and inspections and that as well. We can sort of bundle that all, all together. So if I buy a system from you, you might say, look, every two years we'll come past and have a quick check. And if it needs additional cleaning or so, we throw that in. Is that how it works? Yeah, I mean, there's a charge for the for the cleaning, but if, if it's sort of bundled together, then we can do different deals mm-hmm. after after a couple of years if if it um, needs a clean. But yeah, they, we 
there's some solar panel cleaning companies that get around that say you, you might need to clean your panels every month. And then, I mean, when, you, when you're looking at the, at the monitoring, when you – and because they say, yeah, you can increase performance by 30%. As you got water on the panels, you do see them jump up because the cooling effect of the water, um, but that drops down as soon as they leave. So um, you no. might get a, there's about a one or 2% dust mm. um, coefficient uh, with the panels. And actually I look, look research um, solar panel cleaning companies in, in the cities, in Brisbane and in Sydney. And I mean, they go to fair extremes with nanoparticle water and filterized this and that and streakless panels. It, you, they just need a simple wash. That's all I do. Yeah. You don't need anything fancy. No, don't go for the complicated solutions. No, it's just pretty a, simple. Yeah, a bit of glass cleaner, a dishwashing liquid. Is that uh, what you use, or just nah, plain def- water? Just just plain water. Yeah, you can't use any any um, detergent substances on panels. They right. can mess with the components of the panels and and could actually uh, void your warranty. So it's just water, soft brush, um, if, if needed, and and then that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's a bit of a buzzword going around in Sydney. I don't know if you have it in Townsville already, but it's called the electrification of the home where they say get out of gas and all of that and make it all solar and electric. Do you have that movement coming Townsville way? It was. You did hear it on the news there um, for a little while. I think it's backed off a bit now um, because, I mean, we're doing a lot of off-grid solar systems as, as well. And the first thing I say to a customer in off-grid, make sure you've got gas, <laughs> gas cooking. <laughs> I mean, everyone's barbecue is gas as, as well. So maybe that might be a North Queensland thing, but uh, yeah, I don't, we certainly didn't jump on that, that movement mm. um, with the, yeah, gas is really good. I mean, in North Queensland, you can get cyclones and, and be without power for a while as well. So uh, my personal opinion was, geez, it's good to have gas, gas cooking and mm. um, gas hot water a little bit. If, if someone's got a gas hot water system, well, then don't, don't rip it out. Wait till it's end of life and and then get an electric electric one because electric hot water system and solar, they're a great combo. Um, but, yeah, certainly not um, – no, I don't see that movement much in Townsville. All right. But uh, you've just said uh, electric hot water and solar is a great combo. Can you explain that? Yeah, because, I mean – Solar is always looking for something to put its power towards. If, if you're not using it, using that solar power locally, it goes out to the grid mm, where mm. you get whatever the feed-in tariff is. And potentially, there may not be a feed-in tariff one day. So a hot water system, because it's it's probably the most cost-effective, any of energy-efficient battery storage system there is. It's so cheap. Hot water system, maybe thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, and it can store about eight kilowatt hours of hot water in that hot water system. So the solar, the excess solar, instead of going to the grid, can just go to that hot water system during the day because that water can stay hot for 24 hours, 48 hours. Mm, mm. So, I mean, hot, electric hot water system is perfect for um, for solar systems. And and with my off-grid systems, um, they're, they're great as well. Just people say, oh, do I need to get rid of my electric hot water system and put a gas one in? No, leave your hot water system there little bit different we will start them after their batteries have have complete up completely full say around lunchtime then we'll start their hot water system once the solar is looking for something to do mm. so yeah electric hot water systems are, are, are great and and down the track that'll um as people more and more people get batteries that will save people probably five thousand dollars of additional batteries and electric hot water system as well so very cost effective wow okay something i learned now um True North, solar in Townsville, you just like all the other solar companies or is there something that sets you apart other than your good looks? Yeah, well, de- definitely the um, the good looks. No, not the good looks. No, a combination of three things. Obviously being being local, but, you know, there's obviously new local companies that are coming out each year. But um, having that 20 years experience, we've seen all the ups and downs. We've, we've um, pretty much seen every problem there is. Um, we've, you know, we've done a lot of research in the industry around Townsville. Um, we're probably one of the first people to install, uh, store batteries, uh, in Townsville as well. Um, yeah, just, just having that experience three, over 3000 solar systems installed in the Townsville area, um, 5,000 total customers in that Townsville area. So I guess having, having the experience been around that long. Qualified electricians in the workforce. And, and yeah. Having those 
um, qualified and certified solar installers working for us. And you've got that exchange of information each day as well. So it's not all about what, how much I can read or how much research I can, I can do collectively. Um, I mean, over, over the last 20 years, we've had 60 odd employees come through either you know, apprentices and tradies and, um, solar accredited people, um, solar designers, um, with larger systems, we might get, um, engineers, electrical engineers in to help with the design of, of mm. larger systems. Um, so you're learning from them then as well. Um, yeah, and I guess, I man, people are still looking for value as well. So you still got to be competitively priced, even if you're, um, you know, you're spending a bit more time on your design and, and installation and using quality components, you've got good warranties. You've still got to be very competitively priced um, with sort of your top two or three companies in town. Um, everyone's yeah very similar and very competitive pricing so you, you, you definitely can't go out charging what you want um, people are still looking for good value for money and that's what i think we we provide let's say i'm in townsville and i've got a two three kilowatt system and i'm taking advantage of the 44 cent feed-in tariff but somehow my bill is getting higher what are my options yeah so someone like that 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 two kilowatt system is is probably one in that threshold there where if, if they're increasing their power consumption, they probably don't see any exportation of power. So, and that's where they're making most of their money, getting that 44 mm -hmm. cents. That's of the power they're not using. But if their power consumption is getting up to 20 or 30 kilowatt hours a day, they're still saving money, but they're not seeing the money they're saving. They're using that power locally. Because they're not exporting at 44. Because they're not exporting at 44. So, so if yeah. I get a second system and that then looks after my home consumption, then suddenly my little two kilowatt is starting making me good money again. Is that how it works? No, not quite. It'd be oh. good if it, it did. So they have to make the decision and we help them with that. If we're looking, if they're still a light power user and they're still getting export, then potentially we can swap that system out with a new two, you, you've got to keep the same size inverter mm. and the same total capacity um, of what Ergon's records say that's installed on their home. Two kilowatt is probably a little bit small, but there's still four and five kilowatt systems that are currently operating under the 44 cent feed-in tariff. A lot of those ones, although they're not exporting more, we know by our software that with a new five kilowatt system that's still compliant with the 44 cent feed-in tariff rules, they could then get back, get their payments and feed-in tariffs back to what they were from day one and because still take advantage of the next four years of the feed-in tariff and mm -hmm. potentially get their savings back up to that $3,000 a year uh, and pay for that system in two or three years in instead of what it what cost originally. Is that because the new panels are not degraded or what's the reason? Yeah, because obviously the, the panels that they've got, they're probably only producing as half as much as what they were mm. when they first installed. So they're 10, 12 years old now. A new system, even the same size, can produce twice, even can produce more than what that system produced when it was first installed. So it's a real, it's a real good financial decision for them to upgrade that system now, mm -hmm. that 44 cent. Mm -hmm. Those smaller systems, because there were a lot of 1.5s and 2s, when you look at their power consumption, if the system isn't, if the system is working, we can reassure them that they are still saving money, just not a lot, mm -hmm. or just bite the bullet, get a bigger system, get rid of the 44 cent feed-in tariff altogether and they'll they'll be financially better off as well. Because so they're not really exporting much. So the 44... If they're not mm. exporting much anyway with a small system, they're using all that power. <coughs> it's sort of on its way out. There might be a few little safety issues. Get rid of it, put a new one up, a bigger one, and then you don't have to do anything again. But you that. can do an inspection and give them that advice. You do advice. an inspection and give them that, that advice. So a lot of times at that age, the panels are pretty much gone anyway. They're at the end of their life. But if it is still okay, then we can show them the financial um, outcome of mm. either decision and then let them mm. make a decision mm. either way. So the panels that were installed around 2006 to 2010, 12, were they of a shorter lifespan to what's on the market now? Yeah, definitely a shorter lifespan. Um, a lot of the times the, the back sheet came adrift, they're getting moisture inside the panel um, and they're a lot smaller as well. So you had to have a lot of panels, a five kilowatt system, 10 years ago, that was 26 odd panels. Mm, now yeah. a five kilowatt system is 12 panels. Mm. So um, yeah, definitely um, 
definitely seen a lot of changes there. Right. Okay. Now, I hear you love off-grid. That's a whole religion in itself, isn't it? Yeah. So off-grid is a um, is a different beast altogether. And every single off-grid system, I'm, I'm installing them myself. So I'll, I'll go out on site and I'll have the guys um, helping me. Um, a lot more... Uh, technical and a lot more things to consider on that because you're you're basically creating the grid. Um, you're putting panels up, off grid inverters, on grid inverters, battery storage, um, tying in generators to these systems as well. Remote monitoring. So a lot of these systems, I've got full access for my workshop in in Townsville, and you know I could start a generator on a cattle property in Normanton, for instance. So there's a lot of things that go on with it and. Yeah, they cost a lot as well and, and people are investing um, a lot of money into these systems and it's um, it's something you really got to spend a lot of time on. But, yeah, I, I certainly certainly love it. It's it's um, a bit of a niche um, a, a niche opportunity there but um, it's definitely rewarding as well. You go out to some of these sites, there's absolutely nothing there and when you leave, they're basically – they can do whatever they want. They've got, they've got mm. the grid, mm. the mm. power grid on their property. I mean, there's a lot of responsibility for you designing an off-grid system because if you get it wrong, those people freeze or have no fridge or stuff. Yeah, how do you, it's how do you of, handle that if, uh, responsibility? If something stops on an off-grid, life stops for them. So in town, it's I mean, if someone's system stops working, it's – I mean, they, they can get pretty pretty upset, but life still goes on. Mm. They've still got the grid and, and, and whatnot. But um, with off-grid – in, you know, and if a system goes down with uh, with a system in town for whatever reason, then yeah, most people will call you on Monday or Tuesday. <coughs> if it's off grid, if something happens, you know, one a.m. Sunday morning, you're going to get a phone call. So yeah, it's about have, making sure you got um, <coughs> backup within the system. Um, if something does happen, you know, a generator is going to start, or um, if something happens with, with an inverter, you've got backup solution there or actually just had one on the weekend, something happened with the inverter and I was able to – generally these people that are getting off-grid solar systems, they're, they're pretty savvy. Um, they, they know they, – they, they've got a few strings to their bow. They can, you know, fix, fix the lawnmower and fix the motorbike and, yeah, so they can sort of help us out on the phone. We can identify a few things and, and usually get – get things back back on track but a lot of times these systems might be a long way away as well so you can't just go out to site the mm. next day you sort of got to program it in maybe six months in advance and and check out all these systems but no we definitely do a lot of uh, a lot of off-grid systems we mainly use the australian made selectronic inverter so it's world renowned uh, reliable off-grid inverter um, and also the australian made power plus batteries um, we tie them in with you know fronius inverters as well to get our solar regulation as well. So a lot of these can be on on the roofs of um, sheds or, or they can be ground mount um, mm. solar systems as well. So no, it's definitely um, definitely good fun and um, a lot of camping out in remote areas and lots of driving, but um, yeah, it's a good, good job. But the key rule is make it robust. Make it robust, um, good, good quality, um, try to use Australian – um, made products, especially with the uh, the products that do the heavy lifting, like the off grid inverters, um, and and be really familiar with the products as well. There's no point knowing a little bit about every product. You really need to know a lot about one. Right. That's what we do. Um, in off grid system, the most expensive part is usually the battery. So maybe some people are tempted to keep that a little bit smaller to save money. Is that a smart idea? No, nah, not with um, with off grid. Now, now with uh, what I'm finding with the lithium batteries with with off grid um, being modulized, you can definitely be cost effective with your battery sizing. So you can get it pretty pretty much spot on. Because um, if you don't have to um, you don't have to be exact. Because if the usage goes up or down or whatever, you can just add another battery in, mm. which is maybe a three kilowatt hour or four kilowatt hour battery. Whereas ten years ago, doing an off grid solar system, you sort of had to cater for that all from day one because with the 24 or 48 battery um, system, you can't just add a battery. It's the whole lot's got to go out and the whole lot's got to go in. So you've got a bit more flexibility these days with the with the batteries. Um, and a, a big component with off-grid is getting the generator right as well. So the generator can cover 
um, cover you for all those times where the weather might be bad for a week or whatever. You don't have to oversize your batteries and spend an extra $50,000 on batteries when if you've got a good reliable generator that will start in the event of inclement weather or, mm. or, or some sort of issue, then that can sort of iron out a lot of issues as well. Now, if True North Solar designed the off-grid system properly um, and you don't get too much bad weather, then theoretically the generator wheelie really wouldn't have to turn on too often. No, it wouldn't turn on, but there's, there's a lot of um, – you still want to know that your generator is working. So usually in, a, in the software of the design of an off-grid system, you'll automatically start the generator – probably once a week for 10 minutes because um, the time guaranteed, the time you'll need the generator, it won't work. It's like a whippersnapper. You go to use it and next minute you've thrown it over the fence because it doesn't work. So you need to make sure that the generator is in operating condition at all times. So it is, it is an important part of a, of a system. So you don't want, let's say, old petrol in it because that stops it working, is it? Yeah, correct. So you've, you've people need to, that's what we set up. It's called a maintenance program. So say at, at mm. 6 p.m., Every Friday afternoon for 10 minutes, that mm. generator will start and then the homeowner will know, oh, if that, I didn't hear the generator last last Friday mm. and you'll go out and start the generator manually, ah, yeah, it's working, it's okay. Because if there is something wrong with the generator and something hap- and then something happens to the, to the solar equipment, they might be without power for a month because they can't get anyone to have a look at it and they can't get anyone to fix the generator or they have to take the generator onto site. So you need to be making sure the generator is always in working working mm. condition. It's just your safeguard. But let's say if I bought the system from you, now my generator is stuffed, I haven't got power. Are you going to let me wait for a month? Well, no, we'll just hope that, that, never, <laughs> that never comes around. Yeah. But, I mean, aren't you, like, out there to support it then or are you going to give them, well, bad luck, you should bought a better generator? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if I'm supplying the generator, then, then I'm ob- obviously obligated to to help them out with that. But that's one of the big things is, is them making sure that the generator is working. So mm. if I say, well, when did the generator start last Friday? Oh, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it for six months. That's why you need to make sure the generator is working. So it covers for all for all that. But these these people out on these properties, they're a thousand kilometres away. Oh, they're thousand kilometres? A thousand kilometres away. <laughs> you can't. Six, 1,600 kilometres away. Then they're, used, they're born self-sufficient. So, you know, so spending. you, so you have installed systems a thousand k's away from Townsville, have you? Yeah, yeah, up to fifteen hundred k's away uh, from Townsville. So, uh. yeah, you certainly don't, you certainly can't go out tomorrow. Oh, I'm, I was wondering why you're pushing back to be there five hours later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In we do actually do a lot of um, off grid around Charters Towers. Mm. Actually, we've had off grid systems in for that long there some of them going through battery upgrades and that now we're transitioning from lead acid to, to lithium. Mm. We've got a couple of those um, of those sorts of jobs uh, coming up. Uh, but usually even that, yeah, you, you're booking them in. Um, but, yeah, a lot of things, uh, if it's closer, obviously, yeah, go out the next day or, or same day or, or sort them out. But you seem to love off-grid. Is that because of the design aspect and, you know, it's a really one-off problem and you have to really get stuck into it? Yeah, I guess that's what it is. It's sort of each job is unique. There's none none that, that are the same. So I guess that's um, – and, and you can really see it's making a huge difference to their life. It, it's not just a monetary thing mm. with the off-grid. It's, it's life-changing. It, it's enabling them to move move to that property or it's enabling them to do business at that property mm-hmm. and, yeah, to go to site and there's nothing there and you're walking away and they they can power the whole na- whole neighbourhood or the, or the neighbour, it's um, yeah, it's a little bit different to to um, standard, mm-hmm. standard mm-hmm. systems, yeah. Mm-hmm. So last question then for you, Cash. What kind of really makes you happy? Let's say you walk away from a job and you kind of got a smile on your face. What type of job was that? Uh, I guess it's, yeah, it's a, gust, a customer that um, you've seen gone through that whole process. Either I've sat down with them or, or someone else and um, you know that they've they've gone to a, a few different companies and um, they, I can imagine them, they've, they've put the, the quotes down on the table, they've, they've done their fours and against and they've, they've ticked the boxes and they've had the discussion and, and then they call you back or when we do a follow-up phone call, they... They say they want to go go ahead with you, and yeah, it's it's a real, yeah, you you know you've done 
done the job there and then once it's gone in or a year later or, or whatever they might walk into the office there and they're they're holding a few power bills and they sit them down in front there and yeah it's pretty um get a bit of a smile when that happens you can see that it's really really I, changed their outcome yeah i assume those power bills are low yeah well <laughs> yeah well, not there not there all, all together so that's pretty um actually some of them there was one guy there even just with a standard five five or six kilowatt system we put in i had to look at his power bill because i thought he was having me on he goes oh it's a it's zero there's nothing i said well no nah, that's not possible because you're obviously still using power mm -hmm. at night mm -hmm. he goes no 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 i've looked at me monitoring i know when i use power and we've whether well, he would have been a tough tough guy to live with because he, he sounded pretty brutal and um he yeah. only puts the washing machine on when the solar is there that the wife's not allowed to turn on solar at night no uh, i that, mean washing at night yeah he must have been um, brutal because that, that was the first person i seen yeah with a, even just a standard system in quite a big home he got his power bill down to zero so i know with the monitoring you, you know it is possible mm. um but obviously people with 10 13 kilowatt systems they can get their bills to to zero without too much effort mm. but um yeah he was a record that's for sure so yeah when you see people pretty excited about that and especially ones that done it like 10 years ago and and they know the numbers they've mm. worked it out and, and they know how much they've saved over that 10 or 15 mm. year period it's pretty collectively out of all our customers you know it's in the millions of dollars so yeah mm. it's pretty good happy that you're happy <laughs> <laughs> well cash I must say, you come across a bit shy in the first instance, but I was completely wrong because you know a lot and I normally talk more, but uh, you certainly no, gave us a lot of info. Oh, well, I talk, talk to a lot of people yeah. Yeah. Um, every day. So. Yeah, yeah. so very simply, you're actually very lucky in Townsville. You've got somebody who cares, who can give you a good system and make you a lot of savings when it comes to solar and batteries. Well done, Cash. Thank you, Marcus. See ya. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.